In my experience, energy source is one of those things that students sort of feel they might get tripped up by, but it's actually super simple. Let's let's start this off by drawing some axes. So only because it's vertic vertical, I'm going to put my y axis in first. So let's plop that in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, see if I can get that exactly at zero. There we go, looks about right. And I'm going to make my x axis like this, but a little bit further. I'm just sketching, okay? You, I hope you would make yours like really, really, really good quality, okay? So, whenever we're graph drawing, we want to make sure we label our axes, don't we? So let's label our x. On the x-axis, we are talking here about the intensity of exercise. So just ponder that for a second. The further to the right we go, the tougher the exercise, the more anaerobic the exercise, effectively. So, so this down here is a walk, this up here is a sprint. So I've put it, if you think about it in, those, in that in simplistic terms. And on the y-axis, we are talking about the percentage contribution of energy. And before we put our plots in, which I'm just going to be sketching, I want you to be aware that the green aspect of this is going to be fats. Now, you know that from your biology as a substrate lipids, but we'll call it fats here. And we are going to be talking on the orange plot, we are going to be talking about carbohydrates. And again, you know that they are a substrate, an insoluble substrate, and we are, but they're, in both cases, they're a source of energy, okay? Now, the point we want to make is, as exercise changes and becomes harder and harder and harder, more intense, which source of energy, uh, which source of energy contributes more? That's the question we need to, we need to answer. So I'm going to bring my ruler back in, and it's kind of horizontal, and what I'm going to do is I'm initially going to kind of plot this one out like this, okay? So try to think, as exercise increases, which of these two do you think gets less and less and less as a contribution of energy? So think about that and wonder about which color is going to appear. And here's the color that I'm actually going to draw. So as exercise increases, I think I might have gone slightly off the end there, not intentional. As exercise increases, fats contribute less and less and less as a proportion of energy. Now, if I now draw this down to here, and I'm only sketching by the way, and draw this up to something like here, I'm trying to get this sort of somehow balanced, kind of tricky on here. What we're going to find with our carbohydrate substrate, or let me just call them carbohydrates, is here, let me get to, towards the right sort of end point here, they are going to co contribute increasingly higher proportions of energy as exercise gets tougher. So just to be clear, guys, if this down here is a rest or even a light walk, okay, what we're going to find here is that fats are going to contribute a greater proportion of energy, okay, than carbohydrate. But as intensity of exercise increases, maybe here we're talking about a run, okay, maybe over here we are talking about a sprint, okay, something like that, I'm being general. Now, a couple of things I mentioned to you here. Obviously, at this point, we have what we call a threshold point. So just be aware we refer to this as a threshold, where carbohydrates become a greater proportion and fats become a lesser proportion. So we know by definition that whatever that point would be would be 50% from each, right? Assuming this is these are the only sources protein can actually contribute some energy, but we'll come back to that on a completely different session. So that's a really important point. Secondly, it's really important to stress that carbohydrates are limited, okay? So the harder we work, okay, not maybe not the, uh, uh, an outright sprint, but the more anaerobically we work, the more we use up our carbohydrates and the lower those carbohydrate stores become. Okay, and that's something to be aware of for very long-ranging sporting activity. Now, I want to give you, as it were, three implications. So let me just draw down here, and I'm going to provide you with one, uh, let's do it in blue, two, and let's do it in pink, three implications of what we've just looked at. So the first implications are that fats, or the first implication even, is that fats are used in greater proportions at low intensity exercise. Now, if you've looked at any kind of training intensity stuff, this will make complete sense to you. Or we could say at lower intensities, it's more aerobic. That's a nice way to put it. Okay. Now, secondly, my second implication is that carbs, that substrate of carbohydrate, they are utilized at, in a higher proportion at higher intensity 
Okay, so at higher intensity activity, carbs are utilized more. Okay, and we can say even more anaerobic. Okay, more anaerobic. All right. Now, the last point, and I made it just a moment ago, and it causes a problem, is that carbs are a limited store. Okay, so what that means is that if we are working hard over a long period of time, we have to replenish our carbohydrate stores during our performance. Because if we are working, for example, at this intensity here, for let's say it's road cycling, Tour de France, or something like that, then this is going to be a heavy utilization of carbohydrate, and therefore we're going to run out of our carbohydrate stores. This is why you'll see cyclists, for example, taking on carbohydrates during their performance. I've got one last point I'd like to make. Notice something. At no point in this graph is one energy or one energy source only contributing. They are always both contributing in different proportions. And it's important to remember that because sometimes we tend to think that um, it's all car or uh, anaerobic stuff is all carbs or, uh, or, or let me rephrase that actually because it actually is but we might think that when we're working at high intensity it's all anaerobic it's all carb based no we're still getting this oxidation well I won't get into that we're still getting this utilization of fats it's just a much lower proportion of the total energy contribution thanks